Hi everyone. Um, thought I'd do another video today. Um, this one's going to be down Thompson's Point and um, show you the history down there and uh, tell you a little bit of a story about the archer, the uh, dredge that's down there. And um, yeah, so please enjoy. Uh, it's going to be a long one and uh, it's going to be very interesting. Thank you. Thought I'd uh, stop off. Um, on the way down to Thompson's Point, a couple key places that I'd like to mention. This hill, um, I was told by an old gentleman that they used to, he used to, him and his brother used to go up and shoe shine the American soldiers that were stationed up there. Um, he told me it was a lookout and an AA gun in pla uh, emplacement. Um, so if anybody's heard of that, yeah, I'd like to know, because um, that is very interesting. See the old mound where the railway line used to run along? I'll show you up further anyway, um, some of the old bridges where they used to be. Right, yeah, well this here is the Nankin Creek Cricket Pitch. Let's see if we can go down a bit. And I'll show you the um, swimming hole down here. All right, this is it, the Nankin Creek Cricket Pitch. It's like a nice little place to have a bit of a camp. This is all recreational ground still. Sorry about the wind. I'll take you down and we'll have a look at the um, swimming hole. I used to come down here with mate or mates and we used to come swimming after school. And down here, here we go. It's been a while. Gee, hasn't it changed? I remember it being nice and clean water. Nice little swimming hole here. It's kind of clean, but yeah, I wouldn't want to swim in it anymore. And you see rope swing just over there on the tree. Yeah. Nice little bit of paradise. And as you can see over there, there's part of the old, an old bridge structure from the uh, railway line. And the mound. <clears throat> bit of history too. This line that was out here was actually uh, finished in 1898. It didn't last for long, probably only 20 or 30 years. And um, yeah, so I thought I'd just give you a bit, just over there in the paddock, you can just see it, the line where it used to be. A bit of a mound there. So yeah, let's keep on going, eh? Well, first, uh, yeah, dumped car down here, look at that. I thought I'd let you know, um, yeah, Thompson's Point had a lot of history down here I've, and I've done a lot of research on this area and uh, there was a fair bit of uh, boat building workings, um, a lot of, there was a bit of gold found down here and then it was turned into a quarry, um, there was a quarantine station, uh, the US Army used it down here during World War II for camp and um, chemical warfare training. Um, also, there was rumours of a POW camp, Japanese POW camp down here. And um, I think I have found it, um, but have to do a bit more research into it. And I've done a lot of research online and, and what they say, I'll show you later on anyway where I think it is. 
but over there is the railway line and there was a tent city over there that was for the uh, quarry down here at its time so yeah here we are anyway um, I'll take it down to the boat ramp first and we'll go around as you see it's all been uh, done up down here now Get a new boat ramp in people love fishing it's a good fishing spot for down the down the um, mouth of the river got to watch out for crocs down here too now the archer is over there somewhere I'm hoping I can get closer by going a bit further but if not I've got some uh, photos to put up too of it from last time I was down here a while ago well keep on going well this is one of those quarries that was uh, used back in its day uh, I think this is the one they found gold in to start off with and there was actually uh, they had done a mine and the mine was uh, straight into the mountain and um, you know it wasn't down it was, uh, it was straight through but um, yeah the harbour board uses this quarry for, uh, well, for purposes rocks and whatever and it used to be a gentleman used to live down here he's actually passed away now a lot of people used to um, have shacks down here back in the 80s and 90s i remember coming down here with a friend of mine in mid 90s i think and seeing a couple of the shacks down that way just gotta watch where i walk yeah, but yeah you can see the old wharf one of them anyway what's down here and I think if I can walk through here without stepping on anything I'll show you a bit more you can see the rest of it there too There's the, uh, more of that uh, jetty or wharf still standing to this day well over a hundred and something years old now but I'd say the archer is long gone now used to be just around there somewhere but I'll um, I'll read out a good story later on about it where they used to launch boats from the boat building works see there's a bit of the line they used to run it down there and there you go, more over here, more relics out there Something for ship, is it? What's this we got here? It's an old motor. Probably dumped down here a long time ago, or it might have been a generator, maybe, for um, some reason. More stuff under there. The bottles. 
place has got a lot of relics down here. You just got to know where to look for them. Well, we'll move on, have a keep on going, eh? Bit of an old round concrete slab. I've never noticed that until now. I wonder what it was used for. Alright, now this is the area where I think the POW camp was. I was reading a story on Oz at Wall, which is Peter Dunn's website. It says about a POW camp. And a couple other things I found too it was close to a wharf or a little jetty where they used to unload the prisoners. And just over there, through there, is a jetty. Or what was a jetty. So. A metal detect down here found bits and pieces of building material, um, nails, um, doorknobs, you know, things to do with, with that. And I even found a photo that was online from 1948 or 46, somewhere around that. I'll have to find it again. I'll put it up. And it had six buildings all in a all in like three buildings there and three buildings here and they had white roofs and uh, it was an aerial photograph anyway um, so I put them together and I thought must be something to might have, might have been where it was because you think of it they had would have had some place to uh, have to put the Japanese prisoner of war and this is where I think it is I have detected down here like I said and come down here with the detecting club once before and just in this area here we found a bit of a bottle dump we found old bottles very old bottles you know roughly around the 1940s around that area but anyway um, didn't find anything Japanese so we couldn't really say if it was Japanese or what but if you look find old bits of china plate old broken bottles and old bits and pieces of relics here we go more down there you know you can look around there's a bit of uh, old iron More pottery. So this is my theory anyway, of where I think it is. Same deal down here, there's a lot of old pottery and glass. And look at this one. That's an interesting one. Yeah, so when you come down here and have a look, just you might need a bit of a bit of a high clearance car. Very fascinating. So uh, now down here is where the um, Americans used to be. There'll be uh, a fair few concrete slabs down here, and uh, hopefully I can show you a couple of them if I can remember where they are in this grass. So um, yeah, this is a bit of a four-wheel drive track too. So if anybody wants to come down for a little bit of a four-wheel drive. This is all on state land, mind you, too. So, yeah, come down and have a look. Alright, I found one of them. I haven't really got the best of uh, footwear on today to show you all these. But, um, yeah, we'll see what we can find. So 
So just watch your step. And as you can see, there's one of the concrete slabs. And this one would have been probably a recreational hall or something along that line. Well, that's one of them. Also, most of these places have been detected too is another thing. And uh, detecting when the best time to detect any is when it's very dry or they've had big bushfires through here. We have found a fair few things down here once before, a few of us. Well, I've showed you one of them, and there's heaps of more out there, but uh, yeah, it's really overgrown since the last time I've been, been down here. So I'll um, keep on driving. If I see one, I'll pull up and I'll show you. Just got to try and navigate through this little area. There's a, a fun little hill to get up. See how we go. I'm gonna watch that side. Should be able to go down in here. Got any problems? This is definitely changed from last time. to uh I'm gonna get too close. That's one of the quarries anyway. Now we're right up on top of the hill. Well there's more up that way but um the grass wasn't this long. You can show you can see some good views up here. Up here I've found buttons and buckles all along this track and we're talking old. So it's definitely used up here. Alright, this is a really technical hill this one, very shaly. So I need all concentration on this one. So just uh, sit back and enjoy the ride. See that's Fitzroy River down there. The flood plains. Rockhampton is that way. And if we turn around this way, you see Port Alma. Just through there. It's uh, Port Alma down there. You've got Mackenzie Island down there too. Mackenzie Island was a uh, it was a quarantine station and a leper colony and then after that people lived down there for a little while. Nothing now down there. But yeah, up here, plenty good good views. The Harper board uh, had a building up, I think just down that way a bit more. Yeah, so 
might pull up here for a bit and have something to eat and keep on going. Just thought I'd do a bit of a video too while I'm here at uh, Thompson's Point. That's my brass monkey fridge. Done a bit of a setup in the back here, but uh, I'm not really happy. I don't have much room. So I've got a cargo net for storage. Slimline battery under there. And that's the amps, the modage and everything. Tells you that my fridge is doing at the moment. All set, set up for solar power. My fold out, my fold out um, tray, and I've just got all the stuff on there at the moment. I'm going to change it anyway, I think. So there you go. Good views from up here, right? Eh? That's the river. And you got all the plains. Just thought I'd show you that while we're uh, halfway down. But so far, so good. I know down here is a little bit more hairier, but hopefully, it's uh, it might have changed over its time. I'll have to um, <clears throat> come back down here when the, when the grass is low or there's been a fire or something come down and have a bit more of a detect and show you around a bit more Right there, the big hole. Slip down, and I could be in a bit of problem. A bit hard to see when you're up high. And to your left there, you just got to watch too. Now this is where the old Broadmount railway line used to run. We're going to follow it to, um, to as far as we can get before you get into private properties. But yeah, this is it. Used to run along here. built up. And you see it's all been cut out in the, uh, in the hills.
but down there goes to Broadmount. Uh, the old township used to be down there, and Broadmount Deep Water Port was down there. So that's it guys, um, that's the end of the video, um, I'll put in some extras, uh, photos and a bit more talking about some of the places down here uh, in the video, so if you like it, yeah, give us a thumbs up and tell your friends about it and subscribe, see you later. Graveyard in the Mud, Thompson's Point Ghost. There is a ghost at Thompson's Point. Every sailor will tell you that ship has souls. And if they have, surely the ghost of the old archer haunts the great basin of Thompson's Point. Buried in mud, scuttled to save the channel, the murdered dredge lies back of the jetty. It has forced the jetty to be partially moved out of alignment. A fighter to the last of its days. Stripped off fittings with woodwork rotting, iron rusting and crabs crawling. The dredge was too expensive to run and it looked like being difficult to keep afloat. It was taken behind the jetty between the structure and the main land. Imprisoned there, it seems a sensible thing. As its revenge, it attacked the jetty and pushed the structure over slightly. The task of getting the dredge out was a costly one, and there was a possibility of it sinking and closing the channel. So the broad murdered the ship. They cut holes in her steel sides, and she settled down in the mud. Stripped of most of its gear, the archer provided a lot of products. Iron plate to, to even bolts. Her Babcock boilers were still fit for service. Her funnel was almost cut flush with the deck. A lot of her winches and steel wire cables and triangle mask were still ready for service. But the board could not sell her and cannot use them. Where her steel promises to stand against the elements of many years, her woodwork is crumbling to the joint efforts of sun and water. Yes, there is a ghost at Thompson's Point, no matter how much she has sacrificed.